So first, of course, we're gonna need to create extension by clicking this ad. Can you see my screen clearly, guys? Just let me know if I if you want me to zoom it. Maybe I can zoom a little bit more. There you go. All right, let me quickly add extension number. So as you can see here, it starts um, in extension 1000 to Y because I have here already from extension 1000 and 1001, every time that you're going to add extension, it will gonna give you the next extension number. So in making extension um, number, it will ask you what extension type are you going to use? Is it FXS, IAX, or SIP extension? In our case, we were gonna just create a SIP extension since I am using a Grandstream um, 60, um, 1625 here in my side. And there are actually two method on adding extension. It's either single or in batch, but let me just quickly show you first the single one. So of course, when it says single, you can add extensions one at a time. Uh, let me just copy this extension 1002 to authentication ID. By the way, these three um, credentials are very important. Make sure that you're not gonna forget this one or maybe you, um, because these are the credentials that we need to register on our endpoints. So basically we don't need actually a voicemail. Let me just disable this one and probably, yeah. So by default, Gradstream gives you a default um, random password for SIP AIX. Uh, I mean, SIP or AIX password that we can register to some of the devices. So that is one of the, the way, how are you going to create extension number? By the way, by this one, the permission level, I'm gonna explain it later when we are in the outbound routes because, because this one actually has a relation with outbound routes. But let me just quickly put it in internal as default. Save. And let me go to my 1625. So my 1625 has an IP address of 192.168.0.218. And that's it. You can also access Grandstream IP phones using web browsers. As you can see here, it's pretty much interesting that they are now uh, using web GUI to configure Grandstream devices wherein giving us a lot of, you know, uh, very fr uh, user friendly interface. So my password would be, by the way, the username um, and password for Grandstream IP phones is just by default is user uh, admin admin. But when you logged in, for the first time, it will ask you to change the password. So yeah, I gonna need to create an account. So it's, um, as you can see here, we do not have any account yet registered on any IP PBX. And this model has a two account where you can register two SIP um, extension. But let me just quickly create SIP extension on account one now. Let me just try test, question test, test one. And then the SIP server will be the IP address or the URL of our IP PBX. So in our case, we have here the IP of our PBX 192.168.0.50. Let me copy that one, paste it here, and then just pass this, uh, leave it blank. Now in the SIP user ID, remember, that we just created extension 1002. And then the SIP user ID here will be the extension number from the PBX, which is 1002. The next is the authentication ID that I just put here 1002 as well. Let me copy that one and put it from here. Also the SIP password must be the same and match the uh, password from the IP phone paste. Okay, so these are just the things that we need to bear in mind when trying to register an extension number to an IP phone. So leave the rest blank. Well, personally, I like leaving those blanks. Anyway, save and apply. Now I think it will not really gonna register 
So you can see here, even we refresh that one, why? Question is why? Make sure that every time you configure or you um, make changes from the IPPBX, make sure that you always click apply changes that will gonna appear up in the browser besides the setup wizard. Can you see this one? Okay, let me quickly click that one. Because what is happening, that's why it's not registering. We created extension 102, but we didn't um, apply those changes in the PBX so that the changes are actually not. There you go. And I believe this one should be. All right. There you go. Okay, so that's how you um, create extensions. Uh, I mean, register extensions from a Grandstream IP pool. Now, question How did I make Grandstream? Um, how did I access this one? Hmm, that's actually a good question, right? Let me just try to log out first. There you go. Let's try it from the start. So, how am I going to go in this um, Grandstream web client? Simply just type the IP address of the PBX. So it will show you the um, login page here at the bottom. Can you see this one? Grandstream Wave, this one. Just simply click that one and it will gonna um, uh, redirect you to Grandstream Wave web client. Let me close the first one. Now, how am I going to register my extension number in here? And what will be my password? Pretty easy. Just go to this extension, extension 1000, and get your password here. Copy. Uh, where is that? There you go. So extension 1000, let me put extension 1000 here. So bear in mind that the user name for here will be the extension number, and then the password is the zip password. So you are just still, you know, um, registering an extension number from an IP phone, but this one is quite simple and you just need to put two credentials. Where in an IP phone, you can, you need to put three, I guess, but yeah, doesn't matter as long as it's registered. There you go. Let's see. Boom. Okay. So, are we done? No because we need to test that um, if the call is actually, you know, if the, if the call will be successful. So I have here, let us say, this extension, I want to call extension 1001. I'll just gonna need to click this one. And also we have here a button on the left side corner of uh, this browser, I think I can just maximize the screen. So as you can see here, I can type 1000 uh, here. Oh, no, that's my extension number. I, I want to call extension 1001. So in here, we also are uh, able to make a video call as long as, of course, you have a, any input with a camera. But we're just going to need to test out a audio audio call. All right, so it's ringing now. Let me just answer it. Hello? All right, so I guess you can hear that one. Now, no. Just mute. All right, so I mute the, the other party, and as I said here from the active calls, you can see here the, um, the, um, active calls in real time. From here, extension 1000 internally call extension 1001 wherein I can, you know, hang up the call or I can barge the call actually just listening to their conversation if they're, you know, um, talking to something. Yeah, by the way. So I can do it from here, hang up. And if I go here, the, the call will be dropped. Right, so next, 
the next thing that we're gonna need to do is we are now done with creating extension numbers we need of course to create analog trunks or our trunks now the question is what is uh, analog trunks and VoIP trunks of course we are in the Philippines and we all know PLDD and globe right that is our main um, provider so we can have or we called it landline numbers right landline trunk we can put landline trunk from our PBX in the dashboard it has two FXO ports this is where we are going to connect our PLDT or globe landline um, cable and by going to analog trunks we can now create FXO let us say we put one analog trunk from port number one we name it PLDT and I just wanted to leave it well basically I wanted to put it like hmm, the Philippines yeah All right so PLDT and leave the rest um, as default save let me add another one and the for the FXS2 uh, I wanted to call it like globe and also the tone country will be Philippines okay save now there are some we um, receive many not many actually but some of the 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 resellers are uh, calling us telling us that oh, the call is not you know disconnecting from the from the PBS what should we do blah 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 something like that wherein it, this will these settings will play a big role in um, the PBX, the BC tone, and something like that. Wherein we need to match what tones are using by the provider. So Grandstream gave us the ability to automatically detect it by just pressing this one. And then what we normally do, we actually just use semi auto detect and put a destination number here or any landline number that we can call that is actually active that we can call for testing or something like that. And it will gonna give us, um, this can be used to detect and configure following parameters such as busy tone, as I said, polarity, reverse, um, polarity reversal and current disconnect tones, something like that, okay? So let us assume that we already have two analog trunks. Now, question is, what is zip trunk? What if we have zip trunk and wanted to and we wanted to put zip trunk on our Grandstream PBX? Yes, Grandstream can accommodate zip trunking by going to just you know below the analog trunk, or boy trunk. We can add zip trunk here. Let us say uh, registered trunk. I guess we. There's an Ali voice. Host name? No? 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 Anyways. No, there's none. So you can just put here any credentials given by your um, zip trunk provider. Make sure that it will match from their uh, system. It's like just we are creating extension number. We need to make sure that the credentials will be matched from their server going to our endpoint, which is this PBXs. And we do have some successful um, deployment of, let us say, PLD to zip trunk and globe trunk. You can just call us if you need help setting that up. Okay. But right now, I do not have any zip trunk available that we can test it out. Anyways, right now we can now go to. No, actually outbound routes because the question is if the question is okay so i already have these analog trunks can i can i uh, call now any numbers around the philippines or what should i do those are the things that were most commonly um, calls we receive is actually no we can call outside we cannot receive calls blah 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 and then when we when we saw their configuration they do not have any routes configured now, all right, now that you have extension numbers and trunk that we can use to call outside, we are now going to make a rules or a route that allows user 
to uh, give access um, using the trunk to call outside. Let me quickly add one. Oops, sorry. Right. Let us say PLDT outbound. Okay. Now the pattern here, this actually give us um, the pattern of on how are we wanted to make this outbound possible or yeah, or work. So the syntax will be make sure that at the beginning you at the beginning you enter underscore and mostly what we are using is the digit X, which here, I mean the character X which means any digit from zero to nine. So let us say we are going to call Jollibee um, hotline number. Jollibee hotline number. Nah, All right, let's say eight, 7,000. How many digit is that? Four, five, yeah, five. So what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five, okay? Which means, this outbound rules allows a five digit number um, to call using this trunk. How about when we are going to call a landline number? How many digits that we have from a landline number? I believe there's eight now, yeah? So how can I add more? Can I just put comma? No, just simply enter and put another underscore and let us say x one two three four five six seven eight All right so this will make our trunk capable calling uh, in eight digits from zero to nine well there is actually a wild card here which is the dot matching one or more characters if i do that actually i can just delete all of this and x dot which means any digit from zero to nine, and the next will be the wild card. Either it's five digits, eight digits, 11 digits. It will gonna use this trunk. So I'm not gonna use that one because uh, in our case, we have two different trunks, right? And we don't want to confuse PBX which trunks we're gonna be using. So let us say I want to use this trunk. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trunk using this one and just scroll down and also choose which trunk is for this one and we choose a PLDT and then we will go in here in a privilege level note that this one has the same levels of um, from the extension numbers right what we have in extensions are actually internal let me just quickly save this one first Okay, so we have a privilege level internal and from extension, I guess we also use, where is it? The same thing. Here's the thing. Um, we can use this trunk since it was set to internal because the extension numbers, all of these extension numbers are actually using the same permission internal. But when I put or when I change privilege level to local. Do you think I can still use this trunk even though I dial eight digit and it matches the outbound rule um, using these three trunks? No, you cannot. Because the lower the privilege uh, or the permission from the extension number, it doesn't allow you to use that specific trunk. But the higher, the higher you, you choose from the extension numbers can um, use the trunk that is lower than the extension numbers privilege level. So it's like, let us say, when I put inter international here and my extension numbers are just, let us say, national. Can I still use this trunk to call? No, you cannot because international is the highest uh, privilege level from the given um choices so let me just put here maybe internal so that everything can use this trunk now we can add one more of course we have globe outbound and also globe can also call Jollibee or whatever right 
but let me just put here eight digits as well and put here internal so that all of the extensions can you know call or use this trunk to call and uh, let me just quickly save that one now the question here oops i think they are not equal the same add more yep now the question is here how does the pbx know if you're going to choose pldt trunk or the globe trunk since they are using the same pattern right here's the thing grandstream has a strip um settings here that we can put let us say dial one first to use this pldt trunk now we don't want this number one to deliver from what we are trying to dial so by stripping digit and stripping um this first digit it allows the pbx to delete this first digit before it delivers the numbers going to the landline number can you guys um still following me all right can we continue yeah i guess all right so what if i put here two does that mean i need to put here two as as well no strip is actually counting as a digit so on how many digit you put in this one or character you put before the the um in, uh yeah the int uh what do you call this yeah the digits or the characters here it will count the digits not actually the character so let us say we put strip two do you think this one should be also put as two no maybe this one is zero one which means there are two digits in front before trying to have this digit um get from the pbx but we don't want make two strip of course we just want it to identify which trunk by using just one digit or yeah or so so let us say pattern um one for using pldt let me apply that one and for globe i want to use two but still i strip one digit only okay save that one there you go now the pbx will not confuse if ever that i'm going to use pldt or the globe trunk um i'm just gonna need to put one and then the numbers that i wanted to put so when we now have this um strip i guess we can now use the x dot right because we just put a identification here from using uh, this trunk so using this one x dot i can now call uh, i can now call eight digits five digits and what else ever okay also here i can put it actually like this so that I can I am not going to put any something like this in here just use the wild card I guess that's a very clever thing to do all right I think we are now set for album rules but sadly we cannot test it out because I don't have any uh, um, trunks available at the moment but yeah I guarantee that this one will gonna work how about receiving calls coming from outside numbers of course we wanted to receive calls that's why we have this pbx i just gonna need to add one and as you can see here the pattern will be grayed out when using analog trunk because it uh, the pbx already knows that the calls from analog trunks and any number from uh, outside accepted by the analog trunk where is the destination will be going let us say when i dial my number pldt let us say our pldt number will be 535 i mean 85357502 every time i dial that number where should the call be going it's either an extension but which extension we have three extension is it in the uh, ring group yes we have one ring group. Well, why do we have ring groups we do not 
have it maybe this one is already anyways yeah i have created that one before inbound let me have so for pldt inbound i have here let us say yeah maybe ring group first so every time that there will be a call in our pldt trunk the call will be going to the ring group or maybe i can just put extension 1000 save that one so any call coming from outside to our pldt trunk we're gonna go to user extension 1000 good luck to extension 1000 if <laughs> by the way yeah trunks now to globe we can also set of course extension 1000 as well so that he can she he or he or she can accommodate all the calls whether it's in pldt or in globe so it's all up to you where you want it to go uh, the calls are actually here right so will that work no unless you apply changes which means the pbx accepts all the changes being made by the administrator Let's just wait right there you go so we now have extension numbers we have already created analog trunk and we create routes for our trunk okay now next will be the next will be let us say trying to detect the tones of our analog trunks yeah that's very actually important when deploying our system so how are you going to do that how are we going to know that these tones or these um, tones are really match with what we are using we have here from the pbx settings interface settings fxo ports actually this one you can also have this one change to the philippines yeah, just to make sure you know. No, not FXS. All right. Tone region will be uh, the Philippines and FXO ports here. This is a, one of the important things that we need to um, test when deploying Grandstream. Just click edit. And we have here the ACIM um, detection, which means the alternating current impedance. What is the port one or the FXO? one using we have a bunch of you know choices whether the detection option is in erl or in pr but let's just said e erl and let, if i try to click this button grand stream will detect that one but i'm not quite sure if this system can detect anything all right no connection because i do not have any fxo um trunk or analog trunk connected to the fxo but if you have, it will gonna apply the match um, ERL to that one, let us say. Uh, this one, this is the one that your trunk is using. You know, this is actually pretty much interesting that Grandstream has these features because we, you know, just one click and yeah, the settings are there. And after that, let us say, update that one. Let us say this one is the result of our detection. Just update and again apply changes but i'm not gonna click that one because it just make us the presentation slower anyways yep yep so i have already done this one when users by the way can also manually enter the aca im settings by selecting value from drop down list for each port or user uh user could yeah just like i said make auto detection okay now let's go back to call features here. Uh, the first thing I wanted to configure when it comes to call features is actually the ring groups. Every time that we install or deploy Grandstream um, BOIP system in our reseller or in our partner, we ask for ring groups. Let us say this one. We have here the sales group who are the extension numbers belongs to sales group let us say no not that one 1001 and 1002 
So these two extension number are the sales um, agent. And also here, when you scroll down, we have here a ring strategy which allows us to choose whether how will be the call being um, delivered. Is it simultaneously? If I choose this one, it will make extension 1001 and 1002 to ring simultaneously. But if I put ring in order, it will just generate first extension 1001 and wait for ring timeout. Why do I have here 10? Let us say 60 seconds. Okay, every 60 seconds, if extension 1001 didn't answer the call, does the call will be dropped? No, it will gonna pass through to um, extension 1002 because we just set a ring in order. And also the missed call will be placed to extension 1001 because basically she didn't answer the call. And anyways, um, I have here set, but the question here is, what if none of this extension answer the calls? What will happen? We have here enable destination, okay? So in here, actually by default, it was disabled. Uh, let me just quickly enable this one and where I want to transfer the call if none of this extension answer the call. Maybe go back to my extension number, which is extension 1000, or maybe forward it to another ring group. But as of the moment, we do not have any ring group and we are now using only one ring group. That's why we do not have any choices from here. Or maybe I can um, forward him or her to an external number, maybe 87,000 Charlie B delivery. Anyways. Maybe that number so that every time that the, the call will not be answered by this extension number, the call will be um, forwarded in to external number. Yes, that's right. That's possible. External number is possible uh, putting in forwarding here, uh, whether a mobile number as long as your trunk is capable of dialing those number. Okay. So maybe uh, extension. My extension, All right, save. So we have here now a ring group. So Grandstream UCM supports ring group feature with different rings strategies. As I said earlier, applied to the ring group members. These are the strategies that we have. Okay, the next thing that I am always um, um, setting up is the IVR. I always ask the um, the client or the reseller or the our partner if they want to have an interactive voice response. Imagine you're dialing Jollibee, right? And every time that you're dialing Jollibee, it says, thank you for calling Jollibee. Or maybe you're calling a bank and they're asking you press one for blah, 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 press one for your account, press three for your bank loan, something like that. Those are the things that we can um, configure inside IVR or interactive voice response. Let me quickly create one of it, maybe name mm, uh, Alloy IVR. So by default, it has um, ranging extension starting from 7,000, so on and so forth. Mm, let me just disable this. I'll explain why later. Now the prompt, this is where you can upload your own prompt. This prompt will play every time that there will be a call incoming from this IBR. So let us say we upload here the thank you for calling Alloy Bank. Please press one if you wanted to talk to, you know, your about your bank account, please press two, something like that, blah, blah, blah. That is where you can upload the file in from. And digit timeout, these are the things that you can, uh, you know, configure on your own desire. But I'll just leave it like that. And the welcome prompt will be like this. Now, in here, dial other extensions. Why did I disable this one? If you're familiar, let us say, when you have already encountered dialing and 
corporate number and say, if you know the extension number that you are trying to reach, please dial it now. This is the settings that is being checked on that one. So let us say I dial this IVR extension, let us say, or what else ever, incoming calls, and then the call will be going to IVR and the prompt or the welcome message has, if you know the extension number that you're trying to reach, please dial it at any time. And I know the extension number so that I can just, you know, put, let us say, extension 1000 so that you can not go or navigate to press one, press two, blah, blah, something like that. If you know the extension numbers, you can just dial it at any time. Yeah, this, if you just enable this, okay? But if you disable this one, the UCM will not allow any caller to dial extension number right away even though they know the uh, extension number. Not only extension, uh, we also have here ring groups, but I'm not sure if somebody just trying to say, if you know the ring group of you're trying to call, just dial no, no. Extension number is most common, okay? So let me save that, apply changes, and let's actually try, I can try it. Internally, yeah, I can try to call, extend. Uh, I mean, the IVR, and it will and it should play the prompt that is being sent so how do i do that i just simply call this extension number 7000 i'm using the wp8000 okay. there you go that's it that's the prompt default by grandstream which is just welcome let me try again okay. all right did you just Another one, a job doc call, there you go. Let me dial 7,000. Welcome. That's it, that's the prompt that you're going to hear every time you dial the extension, or I mean the IVR, wherein in fact, we just have using the default one, which is, there you go, welcome. Right, moving on. By the way, no, that's not it. Um, how about how are you going to configure where if, if the caller press one, where will be the call going through? That's actually a good question. I almost forgot here. So from basic settings, you can just go into the key pressing event. Can you see this one? Uh, like click it one. Now press one, let us say for sales. I have here a ring group for sales, okay? Or maybe press zero for, operator's assistance and the operator will be the extension 1000 i have it here press 2 for tech group i have another ring group here but as of the moment i only have one press 3 for blah 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 until you reach at and um the star choices or selection okay so just it's just in here keep pressing event Okay. I hope everybody is still All right. So you can follow. <laughs> it's my fault. All right. All right. I'll try to slow down for a bit. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys can still follow. Now, by the way, this this webinar is recorded, and we will gonna upload this one to our one of our social networking sites. And you can check it out. Make sure to subscribe, and yeah. So where are we now? Pick up groups. Yeah, this one thing is also a good a feature from Grandstream, where in um, UCM supports pick up group feature which allows user to pick up incoming calls for other extensions if they are in the same pickup group by dialing pickup extension feature called default by I guess it's asterisk eight. So I'm going now to feature codes as you can see here. Feature codes, let me find pickup. Okay, so there's actually two. Pickup extension, pickup on ringing. Okay, I can actually try that one. So let us say pick up from pickup group, I have extension 1001 and extension, actually all of us. Pick up one. Okay. 
Now, what does it do is, let us say there will be a call going to extension 1001. Extension 1002 can pick up that call from extension 1001 and extension 1000 can also pick up that call from extension 1001. Why? Because they are all in the same group. But if I try to remove extension 1001 and extension 1000 rings and then extension 1001 trying to pick up the call, he or he cannot uh, pick up the call because he or she is not member of the pickup group. So make sure that the extension number that trying to pick up the call is included in the um, members of the pickup group. Actually, we can try. Let me apply changes. So how are we going to do that? Asterisk 88 or 8. Asterisk, asterisk. Active calls. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to try to dial um, 1002 using extension 1001. So we should be able to see it from active calls. All right. So it's ringing now. Extension 1002 is ringing. What I'm going to do is to pick up that call using my extension number 1000. Since extension 1002 is not available as of the moment, maybe I just try asterisk, asterisk. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right. I guess asterisk, asterisk is not working before because. Anyway, so, oops, I'm sorry. It's echoing. Let me hang up. There you go. So I was able to pick up the call even though extension 1002 is not answering it because we are just on the same uh, page. So what is happening? The asterisk asterisk is not working because maybe let us quickly check. It's a bonus tip in the accounts and um, general settings no we need to find the dial plan oh, there you go why does asterisk asterisk didn't work because in the ip phone there is no asterisk asterisk being put okay so make sure that you include asterisk asterisk in any dial plan of your phone so that you can use that feature code but also, you can also not do that by just doing, you know, changing the the feature codes here because uh, I'm lazy. I do not want to add all of the asterisk code on the phone one by one. Maybe I can just try, let us say, asterisk one, two, three, maybe. Yeah, I guess that's that's generally uh, being applied to all of the phones. Because asterisk asterisk by default is not um, it's not acceptable with the phones without putting it manually. Anyways, that's just a bonus uh, bonus um, tips. Anyway, where are we now? So pickup group, yeah, we already done that and it's working. And yes, so I have already show you feature codes. Why don't we? continue this. So Grandstream has a lot of feature codes here that we can change by our own desire and also you know play with this one. Features codes such as let us say uh, what is the most common feature codes being used? Voicemail, accessing your voicemail or trying to retrieve a message from your voicemail, you can dial asterisk 97 from your phone and your phone will ask for which message you wanted to uh, play, something like that. And transferring, yeah, that is, this is also a, a most common use by, let us say, analog phones. Let us say you are not using any IP phones because IP phone has a one-click button on its, a a hardware that you can transfer calls but how about analog phones they can use as um, feature codes to transfer calls and many stuffs that you can find in feature codes 
subscribe. Okay. Next will be, I guess, that is just for basic. Yep, yep. Next will be the maintenance. I believe this one is in the system. Maintenance. Okay. From here, we can upgrade the firmware. Just you know, but upgrade it via your desired TFTP. If you have TFTP server, HTTP or HTTPS, but by default, it's just HTTP just because we are just upgrading the PBX in a local LAN setup. And this is where you can upload or select the file that you wanted. So if I press that one, it will ask me which file should I... Um, try to upload in this PBX. You can check the uh, latest firmware versions by going to grandstream.com. Under the support, you can see here firmware. Let me just quickly find grandstream. I don't know, UCM. Enter, 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 enter. There you go. What I have here is actually UCM 6202. So what I'm going to to choose is this one. So just simply click this um, link and it will redirect you to download that firmware. Make sure you also read release notes. It's important also to sometimes re uh, read release notes so that you, you're aware what are the changes and what are the, the bug fixes being made or being done in this particular firmware. So now, let us say you already download that one. Go to firmware path. I will go go to maintenance up under the upgrade firmware file path. Choose file to upload, and I have already. Uh, I think it will be a bin. Uh, I mean a zip file that you need to extract. But I already have here extract this one, and just choose the bin file. Open, but I'm not gonna. Um, I to open this because I am running on the same firmware. Go to system information, yeah. 20.23 and here's the firmware. Okay, so that's how you upgrade your PBX. And also from Grandstream, they have here a important upgrade node that we can, um, it's actually marked in red, so it's really visible, right? Now is the backup. So backing up a config file is playing a very important um, part in PBX. How? Let us say you forgot your password for some no reason. For some reason, I forgot my password. Of course, um, if you forgot your password and you call us, I'm not sure if we can help you. <laughs> with that one unless we're just gonna reset your password i mean your pbx and reconfigure but if you have a backup file we can just you know let me try back up this config file that we have and we can just pretty much restore it right away without any problem so we have here a local backup let me download it from my pc Save, yep. So it will download from here. Now, if I factory reset this PBX, oh God, I need to reconfigure this PBX right from the start. No, because you already have the backup file, okay? So just upload the backup file from here. Downloads, backup, open. And it should be showing like this and you can just simply click restore and it will restore every anything i mean any configuration every configuration that you have done in this backup file so yeah i guess it saves the day and also i wanted to discuss about cleanup maintenance cleaner okay uh, just one sec. Right. 
right so from here um, CDR cleaner if we wanted to enable this yes so the clean time enter a 0 to 23 I think yeah 0 to 23 to specify the R of the day to clean up the CDR let us say every 23 or every 11 p.m. Um, cleaning conditions by schedule if the clean interval is let us say three cleaning will be performed every three days to remove all the uh, all records that were generated three days ago let us j just say three from here let us say keep last x records if the maximum number of cdr uh, has reached let us say five fifty thousand records from the cdr has been reached cdr will be deleted starting with the oldest entry at the configured cleaning time so let us say every one thousand actually ten thousand is the minimum every ten thousand records from the cdr will be clean and deleted starting with the oldest entry at the configured cleaning time how about days right so it will delete all entries older than the x number from here let us say every 30 days but i don't want to be like that i want a scheduling i want clean interval to be performed every end of the month i guess yeah every end of the month with 11 uh, every 11 p.m Q statistics, if we wanted to enable the Q statistics, that is pretty much the same with CDR cleaner. Conference call, file cleaner. This is this is one thing that is very uh, important. We need to pay attention because if we set it incorrectly and you are looking for <laughs> your data and it was already deleted, then Good luck, I guess. Anyways, enable file cleaner, um, clean files in external device storage or whatever. If you have NAS or USB stick connected to this one um, or SD card, whatever you have. And choose cleaner files. What are the files that you want to clean? Let us say call recordings. Um, uh, backup files no I don't want to delete any backup files but yeah maybe just call recordings because this one is eating up a lot of space actually all of the recordings of course voicemail files as long as it's a a voice recording clean time enter the R of the day to start the cleaning so let us say every 11 p.m. or maybe every after office hours every 6 p.m by threshold we want by threshold or let, let's just go by schedule so every let us say 30 days but no i don't want that one i want by threshold the threshold check at the configured cleaning time every day to see if the storage threshold has been exceeded and performing cleaning of all file it uh, if it has so let us say every uh, ninety percent of the storage let us say it reaches ninety percent of the storage I want to perform this cleaner lastly delete all files older than let us say uh, 90 days so any file that is older than 90 days I want it to delete okay so that's how you can figure this one but if you have questions or if you are confused how this works you can just ring us here from uh, in alloy and we are happy to help the next one is the signaling trouble shooting yep in here we have um, not really common but we just um, we still have inquiries about FXO um, audio. 
So what we just have here is just getting the audio record trace. And this is just for troubleshooting, by the way. You can just call us if you need help with your analog um, tones or analog record trace. This is something like advanced already. Um, network troubleshooting in here, you can actually packet some, uh, I mean, capture some packets. Let us say from the LAN side, if I start packet and I try to call extension 1002 from extension 1001, I'll start the call. So it's ringing, answer it, and drop the call. Stop the capturing, download, uh, save the file, and go to the file. This is how we read packet captures. By the way, make sure that you download Wireshark to get this one work. So these are all the packets being made in the system when I try to call from extension 1000, uh, 1001 going to 1002. So I wanted to filter SIP and go to telephony, VoIP calls, and this actually the call being made, as you can see here. SIP extension 1001 going to SIP extension 1002 and the conversation is being done. Um, we can select all of that from the flow sequence here at the bottom. And, the one, and here we can see that X, um, IP address 192.168.0.92 that is actually the AWP 820 IP address, which is the extension number 1001, going to 192.168.0.50, which is our IP from the PBX. So this is actually how the call being made. So the WP820 or the extension 1001 trying to invite PBX because saying, hey, I wanted to call extension 1002. And then the PBX replies back. Yeah, I'm trying. Now the PBX forwarded the call to 192.168.0.214 and I guess that will be the 1625, which is the extension 1002 that we just, you know, called. All right, yeah, I got your call. Yeah, trying, ringing, 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 and then, un uh, then until they answer the call, this is the codec being used, the G711U or the PCMU. And disconnect the call. So yeah, all right. So that is actually a pretty advanced one, but just a quick guide for you guys. How are you reading packet captures? Anyways, from here you can also ping. Let us say the the IPPBX is not communicating with one of the phone, and we ask what is the IP address of the phone, and he told me this, or maybe she told me this. Start. Then boom, so it's working. I mean, the PBX can ping the, or can reach the uh, IP address given in the network so that it means it should have a communication with the PBX. That's why we can register it from here. But if the client says, this is my IP and it's not replying to our PBX, then maybe it's, not connected on the same network of our PBX. All right, let's now jump into CDR. Yep, CDR or the call uh, detail report or call data record, whatever. But here, as you can see, the pretty much all of the records being um, you know done in the PBX, all the calls. So the last call that we just did is calling from 1001 going to 1002. Action type is style, I directly dialed that one. Now, question, how am I going to record the conversation from extension to extension? Ah, okay, you wanted to somehow want to hear all the conversation or record the conversation being made Every time 1001 makes a call, 
just go to extension um, from here, extension, and then select extension 1001, click edit, go to features from here, and then scroll down. You can see here that the auto record is set off by default, wherein you can activate that one choosing only internal calls, which means every time extension 1001 call to any extension number, it will gonna be recorded. But if I choose only external numbers, it will gonna say extension 1001 calls to extension 1002, it will not gonna record because external calls will be just recorded by means extension 1001 calls to Jollibee that will be recorded because he uses or she uses the trunk externally. We can also choose all calls. So both of them can be recorded. Let me save, apply changes, and I'll call now. Maybe 1000. So 1001 call 1000, doing it now. Answer. Hello, this is just a test call for recording for this today's webinar. Hang up. Go to CDR. CDR. Now, as you can see here, there is a icon of a media cassette tape in here which indicates that this call is being recorded because yeah we basically enable it you can press this one to play save yeah you can do that one something like that but i'm not gonna try because we already know that i just recorded a conversation the good thing here is you see that this is being uh, reflect in the CDR. Now, how about if uh, you just wanted to see all of the recorded files? We have here recorded files under. So this is the first recorded file that we have, okay? Are we clear, guys? Let me see, just one sec. I hope everything is actually uh, being answered, all of the question being answered by our grant stream support in here. And let me just quickly see if we can proceed now. Actually, there's just a few more things that I were gonna discuss. All right, I guess we can continue now. Moving on, go to last one, which is the value added feature. Zero config, let us say you have a multiple or bunch of IP phones, let us say a thousand of it. And of course, as a lazy technical guy, I don't want to create or I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, use this method to register one by one all those thousand of phones. So what I'm going to do is actually use Grandstream Zero Configuration, which by means you it allows user to configure all the phone by just doing one click yep you heard it right so i think i can try to just let me just quickly factory reset one of the phone and let's try to do a zero configuration i am now factory resetting this phone so that we can try zero config but while doing that let me just go on first with the other value added features crm so ucm supports the following crm api such as sugar crm v tiger crm zoho crm legacy version 1 api so CRM, yeah, anything in here, it was, I mean, it is supported by Grandstream CRM, okay? 
so uh, which allows users to look for contacts information in the contacts leads and account tables shows the contact records in CRM page and save the call information in the contacts history most of the time um, BPO companies or cons call center setup uses CRM um, integration how about PMS of course, we all know PMS uh, as Hotel Property Management System, which including check-in, check-out services, uh, wake-up call, room status, do not disturb, which provide an ease of management for hotel application. The PMS integration on UCM is currently supported only with one of the three following. This one. The MITL, the following solution, MITL, H-Mobile, HSC. So these are all the available features as of the moment. You can see here the check and the X. What are the available and unavailable? Okay. So yeah, let me. And yep, I think that's pretty much it. So what are we doing now is the zero config. So I have already factory reset one of the phone here. So what I'm gonna do is I will try to click auto discover so that I can see or the UCM can detect all of the Grandstream IP phone that is already in the network. So I'm going to try to choose SIP message and the broadcast IP as scanning the IP address. So scanning the entire network segment may take some time. Proceed anyways. Of course, yeah, I wanted to proceed. And I wanted to show you. And if I look in the... In the Grandstream GXP 16.2.5, I need to, yeah, here's the thing that I'm mentioning earlier. It will ask you to change the password. That is a added security uh, by Grandstream. I need to see what is the MAC address of this one. Okay, maybe the four, fourth last digit will do. 47VB1. 47B1, there you go. I guess this is it. So what I'm gonna do is click this one. And hang on a sec. Did you saw that one? So this is the, the uh, where is it? What is the IP? 47B1. Uh, oh no, scan result again. There you go. 47B1, select that one and go to edit uh, by doing this one so if I wanted to add an account for this I can simply just quickly choose from which extension from here but this is um, how are you doing a basic zero configuration so if I update this one are you sure you want to send the notify to update the settings of the device? Of course, I wanted to. Sending notification and from here on my phone besides me, it's actually already registered. Remember, we factory reset it, right? There you go. And when we access this one, there's no account from here. But when I try to go back to status, as you can see here that it is being added um pretty easily that's how zero config works and there are a lot of things that you can do in zero config mode you can assign auto assign extension numbers which by means it will where is it just what there you go zero config enable zero config enable automatic configuration assignment um auto assign extension so the zero config extension will be starting from 5,000 to 6,299. So you can uh, change that one 
be going to zero config extension segment and I believe it will gonna go you to the general settings of this PBX. There you go. General settings here. Zero config. Where are you? There's one. Auto provisioning extension. Let us say we want that one to be from extension 100. Uh, yeah, conflict with call park. Okay, so in here, we need to comply with what is required by the TBX. So you need to rearrange some of the extension ranges so that you can use this one. But going back to zero config, um, there you go. So if I did this one and going to zero config scan result, all of it, yeah, it's pretty much when I update config of this one and everything will gonna be, um, and it every configuration or every extension will be given to the IP phone being scanned. So let us say from 1001, you have 8,000 extension. I believe it will gonna start for extension 5,000 to 5,999. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I will gonna end this um, basic training and deployment with um, with this today's webinar. I hope you guys uh, I hope you guys learn and if you do, I mean, if you have any questions, you can pretty much, I mean, just go to Q&A or go to our chat box and we will try to answer your call, I mean, answer your questions one at a time. So it's Q&A time now and that's it. That's all for today. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Just by the way, guys, just ask questions and we will try to answer those questions for you. Right. All right, I have here a question from, uh, from, where is it? Gerhard, is that right? How to connect landline? If you have a PLDT fiber home router with two phone ports on the router, can I just connect the phone port to the FX support on the UCM and then configure an analog trunk in the UCM for in or outbound calls. Yeah, yeah, uh, Gerhard, is that right? That's the name, right? Gerhard, uh, thanks for your question. That's right. As long as the cable that you are using is working with any analog phones first to test it out, you can connect those line going to UCM without any problem. 
just like what I uh, show earlier with inbound and outbound configuration. You can do that. Next. You're welcome, Gerhold. Yep, we are still accommodating questions. So if you still have questions in mind, we are still available and not ending this webinar. And thank you very much, Jazz, for answering most of the questions from our partners and yep i just wanted to say thank you so much and if you guys still have questions in mind you can uh, put it in our q a or in this chat box we can still answer those questions Thanks on that. All right. By the way, this webinar, especially on the technical side part, was already recorded and still running actually. And we were gonna try to upload this one with our social networking site platform. Okay, another question from Anthony Gabao. Does Grandstream has models that support GSM calls? Yes, actually. From here, let me just quickly show you one of our IPPBX, maybe, or maybe one of our uh, GSM gateway. We are using GSM gateway to use SIM cards or, you know, um, SIM cards that uses as a trunk and we can call mobile numbers. We call it GSM um, gateways, but Grandstream doesn't have any any GSM devices so far, but most of the SIP GSM gateways are actually um, supported by Grandstream as long as they are using the same protocol SIP 3261. Uh, let me quickly show you our GSM gateway, but this one is actually a different brand. But yeah, as I said, I'm not sure if I'm able, able to show you our GSM trunk. But yeah, as I mentioned, it's working with Grandstream PBX as long as it's a SIP. And that will be the Grandstream UCM, yes, that um, supports GSM call. Yeah, Anthony from question from Anthony Gabao. Does Grandstream has model that supports GSM call? Yeah, that will be the UCM, uh, Grandstream IP PBX. But if you guys questions about GSM devices or GSM gateways, you can just call contact us. We can help you to provide that um, that information and maybe devices for that one that we have already proven tested. Here are our emails, sales at support at .com .ph and support at .com .ph. And you can also contact us in the given number on the screen. So that's it.
So if you still have questions, just try to ask and we are still here to answer questions. All right, additional one more, maybe two more minutes before we end this webinar. I guess that will be last call. Thank you. All right, uh, we'd like to thank all of the participants who joined today, and especially the Grand Stream APAC, Kenny Mo, and Jazz. Thank you very much for joining us and supporting us in this webinar. So, um, to our participants, if you still have any questions, I think you can reach us to email or contact us or call us or chat us on our. Um, social networking sites and our website. So we will now end this meeting. Thank you once again. Thank you so much, guys, for participating today. And I'll see you guys on the next webinars. Have a nice day.